Hello there. So, I'm not sure I can call this an art haul or even a mini art haul. Uh, they're just a few brushes. What led me to this purchase was that I wanted a bigger brush, um, travel brush, that could do, you know, larger washes without bringing a mop brush or something like that with me. Uh, this is what I have so far, this little pockety thing that I pop into my bag. I made this, and this is the largest one that I have. This is a 10 from Muscoda. And I saw that um, A Gallo uh, watercolors, which are handmade watercolors from Azizi in Italy, they're beautiful. Uh, they're quite, I don't know, expensive. I guess Daniel Smith are about as expensive as they are. Um, anyways, they had a set that came with a Tintoretto brush, a uh, mop style brush, a uh, quite large one. So just checking out the Gallo site, you can buy them individually off of um, the site, but I know shipping was really expensive from A Gallo, and then there's customs if you go through a, a courier. She will send them through regular posts, but still, it's expensive. Then um, Jackson's does have um, these as well, the 1337, but they only go up to a size 8. So that's not really what I wanted. And they are on the Tintoretto site, of course, but they don't sell them through the site. As far as I can find, you have to find a distributor. Um, so I just did some looking and up came Rosemary & Co. brushes. I've heard a lot of good things about this um, this brand. They're made in England and I saw a brush that it might do. It's again, it's hard to tell. I tried, they have measurements and everything, but it's still not the same as when you actually come to have it in your hands. But so I ordered that one and well, the, um, uh, postage wasn't as much or wasn't too astronomical um, it was more than say what you would pay from Jackson's um, so it's about $18 to ship from the UK to Canada so it actually was that price if you ordered more so I thought might as well make it worth it so I ordered a few more more specialty brushes, not something that I already have. So let's see what we have inside. Well, that's nice, a little handwritten, or well, that's their signature. And that's probably my invoice. And here we go. So I got a couple of the travel brushes. I just like having the brushes protected like that in this metal container and not having to have a full uh, brush wrap with me. So nicely packaged for shipping. Everything looks in good condition. And so this is what I got. I got the R16 Pocket. It's a sable nylon blend. And I don't know if there's... logo on it and this is their dagger brush I thought that might work in a pinch for I have a flat brush this is um, the pro 
Pro Art Midas Touch. So I thought that might give me a little bit more scope. And this is a pointed round. It's supposed to be size 12. Better use scissors. I'm just going to end up cutting myself. And this is the, the big guy. So if we compare that to the Skoda, it is bigger. So I think that will work. That'll work fine. So that's those two. And then I got a really, really, really tiny. Very, very tiny. 15 zero. And look how tiny that is. Like that's just insanely tiny. So doing the really, really delicate detail and a really nice handle on it too. But again, how tiny is that? And last are these two. And this is a rigger sort of brush, but also tiny, very slim. So making really, really thin lines across the paper. And then I went for this because I don't have anything with a point like that. The closest with the, the Princeton one, the 14 has a really nice point to it but look at that that is just sharp it would hurt you does it hurt it does kind of actually hurt so there you go so that's what i got i'm very pleased with it i had more in my shopping cart but for some reason when i went away and came back to the shopping cart was just empty so Anyways, that was just something telling me that I should rein it in and buy less. But I think I'll be really happy with those. Anyways, let's test them out. Okay, so when you first get a brush, um, you'll notice that it's very stiff because there's sort of a sizing on it. And you just have to wash that away. If you, you don't want to jam it down into the water jar, kind of just want to work that out. You're inclined to like press down your, um, your brush, the hairs of the brush, but don't do that. You want to keep these in really good condition. Have a little bit of a rag nearby and I'm just using this um, Da Vinci watercolor in deep purple and here we go and you can do the most delicate line with a dagger brush or nice big flat wash with it as well. So I think I'm quite pleased with that one. And don't be worried that, you know, you're gonna get a moldy brush because you know, you're not letting it dry, you're putting it back in maybe right away. There's a hole in the bottom of these. So just like any of the other travel brushes I have. So they'll let air in so you won't get mold. And there we go. I'm just going to leave that to sit. 
and let's go to this big one. Again, just work that sizing through. So you see the bristles relaxing. You can feel it right away too. a bit bigger than the Skoda one. So I think that will be nice for a wash. Again, it's not going to replace something like, like I have here or like that, but it'll work. And I work, I tend to work small when I'm traveling. So that should be fine. And next up is this really, really, really pointy one. Let's see how that works. start with the point. That's how delicate you can get the line. And that's just that's not hair from the brush. That's my cat's hair. It's everywhere. So she right now your spring coat. Now it does want to, I don't know if you can see that, the way these shorter um, hairs are kind of, let's see if I can see how they're kind of splaying and you get the center is the tallest. So it kind of kind of splays out, but you're not really. I don't think I would no wear, oh, wear it, use it as a normal um, round brush. I think because of that, you kind of want to keep it to, to something like that, not doing big areas that you would do with a a regular round brush. So that's just good to note to myself. But if I wanted to do that, I would do something like the long round, which doesn't splay out like that, with the much shorter and then the middle tall, like this does. And now the rigger, small rigger. Another good one for thin lines, but so were the other two. You just drag it. Oops. Really just softly across for really thin 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 lines
it really depends on how wet you have the brush, how softly you're kind of dragging it, letting the brush do most of the work. And then last is the smallest of the brushes. Again, very, very small. And just imagine putting little highlights in an eye even tiny, tiny little eyelashes or whatever you do. It is so incredibly small and I'm sure if I wasn't doing this on camera, if I was sitting down, I could go even smaller. Tiny little dots. There you go. So those are the rosemary brushes. And I have to say so far I'm pretty pleased. And the best thing to do is just start using them and see how they would suit uh, different techniques, um, different things like that. And then maybe I'll report back in a little while or update the description to let you know how they're working. So thanks very much for tuning in. If you like, please um, like this uh, video or subscribe for so that you won't miss out on others. And follow me on Instagram. I promise I will be having um, some giveaways soon. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much. Bye.